Well, hello, friend, and welcome back to our journey through the Proverbs. Today is day 13 of our 31-day journey. Why don't we do this? Why don't we just go ahead and dive right into our text for the day? Of course, we're reading Proverbs chapter 13, and in verse 1, it says, A wise son listens to his father's instruction, but a scoffer doesn't listen to rebuke. By the fruit of his lips, a man enjoys good things, but the unfaithful crave violence. He who guards his mouth guards his soul. One who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. The soul of the sluggard desires and has nothing, but the desire of the diligent will be fully satisfied. A righteous man hates lies, but a wicked man brings shame and disgrace. Righteousness guards the way of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. There are some who pretend to be rich, yet have nothing. There are some who pretend to be poor, yet have great wealth. The ransom of a man's life is his riches, but the poor hear no threats. The light of the righteous shines brightly, but the lamp of the wicked is snuffed out. Pride only breeds quarrels, but wisdom is with people who take advice. Wealth gained dishonestly dwindles away but he who gathers by hand makes it grow. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when longing is fulfilled, it is a tree of life. Whoever despises instruction will pay for it, but he who respects a command will be rewarded. The teaching of the wise is a spring of life to turn from the snares of death. Good understanding wins favor, but the way of the unfaithful is hard. Every prudent man acts from knowledge, but a fool exposes folly. A wicked messenger falls into trouble but a trustworthy envoy gains healing. Poverty and shame come to him who refuses discipline, but he who heeds correction will be honored. Longing fulfilled is sweet to the soul, but fools detest turning from evil. One who walks with the wise men grows wise but a companion of fools suffers harm. Misfortune pursues sinners, but prosperity rewards the righteous. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. An abundance of food is in poor people's fields but injustice sweeps it away. One who spares the rod hates his son, but one who loves him is careful to discipline him. The righteous one eats to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked goes hungry. Those poor wicked always going hungry. Well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, again, man, full, chock full of, of good, good nuggets. Uh, I love to read the Proverbs. Today, there was, a, I think, a couple of verses that to me seemed to go hand in hand. And that was in verse 12, it says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when longing is fulfilled, it is a tree of life. Similarly, in verse 19, it says, Longing fulfilled is sweet to the soul, but fools 
detest turning from evil. Now, I'm not sure what kinds of things come to your mind when you think of a longing fulfilled, but I think one thing that really was helpful for me in shining a little bit of light on these verses, especially verse 19, because verse 19, if let's read it again. It says, longing fulfilled is sweet to the soul, but fools detest turning from evil. Now, initially you might think, what in the world did those two uh, halves of the verse have to do with each other? If you remember one of the first videos that we did, we talked about how the Proverbs are worded in couplets where oftentimes the first one is either a, has a contrasting view or other, um, otherwise a, a, a reinforcing view of the first part of the statement. These two statements don't really seem to make much sense. Longing fulfilled is sweet to the soul. I get that. When, when a longing is fulfilled, when you, when you get your heart's desired, man, it's so sweet. But fools detest from turning from evil. Well, it wasn't until I read the New Living Translation uh, version of this verse where it says, It is pleasant to see dreams come true, but fools refuse to turn from evil to attain them. Ah, I get it now. Yes, it is pleasant. It's so incredible when you see your dreams come true. And I think sometimes what happens is that we think that our dreams coming true has so much to do with circumstances outside of our control. The reality is we have a lot more to do with the manifestation and fruition of our dreams than maybe we care to admit. And this actually says fools refuse to turn from evil in order to attain your dreams. And what these uh, verses tell me about our dreams and about my dreams and not only dreams, but our dreams, our longings, our desires. That's what we're talking about here. Number one, it says they are godly. I, I don't know how many times I've heard, you know, your dreams are, are not good. You're not, they're not healthy. You, know, you shouldn't, you know, go after your desires. Well, you shouldn't go after unhealthy <laughs> desires, certainly. But uh, dreams, longings, desires are godly, for one. Secondly, they take wisdom to attain. They take wisdom and discipline to attain. And thirdly, we can actually thwart our own efforts by thinking, speaking, and behaving foolishly. We can sort of knock down our own sandcastle, so to speak. To me, this is all about taking ownership and responsibility for our desired outcomes in our lives. And so my affirmation for the day is, I take ownership for my outcomes. I take ownership for my outcomes. I'd also thought about doing, I am responsible for my outcomes, but I really like this, I take ownership. There's like this um, active participation, right? It's, it's, um, it's getting on the offensive. Uh, instead of just kind of sitting back and letting things happen. Well, that is my takeaway from Proverbs 13. What I want to do now is uh, focus on another takeaway from another viewer, and that is from Roland, a great friend of mine from Pasco, Washington. And what he writes in, and this is regarding verses uh, 3 and verse 20. Verse 3 says, He who guards his mouth guards his soul. One who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. And verse 20, one who walks with wise men grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. And what Roland has to say is that verses 3 and 20 go hand in hand for me. We only learn and grow when we listen. Hanging out with wise friends and listening to them is the quickest way to learn. And Roland has this incredible affirmation that I absolutely love. He says, I am hanging out with wise friends 
and listening to them more than talking. Ah, love that. Love that affirmation. Thank you so much, Roland, for sharing your takeaway and your affirmation with us and with the community. And now for you, those of you who are uh, viewing, watching this, would love to hear your takeaway. What what kind of takeaway, what spoke to you today? Maybe you want to take a brief moment and read through Proverbs again and then come back and share with us what is your takeaway? What is your affirmation? What are you going away with from reading Proverbs chapter 13? Well, I'm so very grateful that you guys uh, have joined uh, joined us today, joined me. Um, I hope to see you back again tomorrow. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, please feel free to reach out. There's uh, information in the description on how to contact us. So for now, so long. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.